All right, I've been looking into um, light and doing a lot of research on that. We've accelerated light and understand it quite well. Now, the question that arose uh, was about the um, damage possibly caused by infrared. Now, there is statements being made that infrared is beneficial. So we decided to go ahead and look at that, and here's what we found. I'm sure everyone understands what a atom looks like, and these are atoms, that's the nucleus, and these are all the electrons in their orbits. And they can jump out and drop back and so forth, they can absorb and give off electricity, and they can flow the outside, they can join some of these with another one of these that has a couple of spare electrons or needs a couple of electrons, that's the way bonding works. It's a very simple process, you don't have to know much about it, but what the takeaway here is that these little things are all in the air everywhere and they're called ether. And some of them are moving very fast, that's called light. The rest of them are just sitting around ether. They're just particles in the air that you walk around, you get static and everything. That is the ether. And that is what lines up the little lines of magnetic fields in the um, iron filings. They follow these little ether lines. And we can show them in the... Um, light experiments that I've been doing it with another fellow in Australia, and I'll show you that right now. Alright, at some point we'll get deep into this because this is the research we did. This is accelerated light. It's coming through an accelerator here, which is a Venturi. Very simple device. It forces the light to accelerate, and it does. And when it comes out of here, you can see these little beams. Each one of those has a head on it, which is one of these discs, which is a um, this is the um, magnetic lines of flux, the, the magnetic field that surrounds the particle. And uh, it, it, this is what I believe, and, and I'm pretty sure it's right. The particle is in the center here, and it's shooting through space at extremely high velocity, and it's slowing down at this point. And that's why you see some different colors here and there. But you see all those little dots? Those are literally ether particles and they're lining up plus to minus plus to minus plus to minus in this field as that particle shoots out through space and in a wire it sets up the exact same lines of field field lines around with magnetic filings and they follow the same ether particles that is what conducts everything and it conducts lightning and everything else it has ether in the air has a, a lot of resistance to the flow of electricity of light through it but light obviously we know penetrates it quite well and that is the expression of light's magnetic field in the ether and it's you know obviously it's a special way of photographing it has to be in a certain light and this and that all right, so back to what is damage or not. Now, he's talking about in the last decades, it's been proposed that the sun's infrared A wavelengths might be de de deleterious to human skin and that sunscreen, in addition to their desired effect to protect against the UV, B, and UVA, should also protect against the IRA, which is infrared. <coughs> Excuse me. And perhaps even visible light could cause these kind of effects. And the effects are this MMP-1. Oh, here it is right here. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Several studies showed that the, the near-infrared NIR may damage skin collagen, which is the things that hold you together. Those are the structural components in your skin. They might damage that skin collagen content via an increase in MMP-1 activity in the same manner as is known for the UV and so forth. Now, what is MMP activity? Let's look at that. Now, you can look this up, but it's, it, all it does is this is the kind of stuff that goes in to destroy collagen fibers. And you, you need it in your body for different reasons, like to get rid of tissue, like from a, a baby being born and all this business. It, it goes in there and it has it's a specific reason to go in and destroy tissues. And um, that is what this MMP does, MMP-1 does, and that is what appears to happen from infrared radiation. It looks like, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the, well, let me show you. All right, and um, this is a, a, a radiation 
charred basically and these are very very low radiation levels they have no damage to to skin or any of that business but once you get up here into microwaves obviously there's some damage going on then you get into infrared which is the heat this is where you're scrubbing the molecules back and forth when you get into the infrared you're you're there's a there's a difference here that i believe could penetrate uh, it's still supposed to be non-ionizing, which means it doesn't break molecules apart. When you get up here, you're breaking them apart. Uh, X-rays, gamma rays, you can damage DNA and you break bonds up there. But apparently they say at this level, you don't fracture the bonds. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. And all this relates to here is the wavelength. Back here, they're way long waves. As they go further, further, and they get closer, and they all of a sudden start buzzing like crazy. And up here, they're going so buzzy that they, they, the faster the frequency, the more energy the wave. That's all it is. They weigh the same amount, so they everything weighs a pound. They spin here real slow, and you get hit with a pound. You get faster, you get hit with a pound and a half. Faster and faster, two pounds, ten pounds, fifty pounds, a thousand pounds, a million pounds. When you get up to spinning at trillions of times a second, billions of times a second, these little things have absolutely incredible power, and that's why it damages you and go right into your body and everything else. So that is the reason for the spectrum here of distance. Now we see right in here, this is a visible spectrum. I, I believe it's 400, 650 nanometers or something down to around 450, I believe that's it. And now they want to go into the 5 nanometer radiation for 5G. That's what that means, it's 5 nanometers. We see 460 nanometers. They want to go right on this line, it sounds like to me, and I'm not sure that's a great idea. And this is the stuff that gets damaged, is this interstitial collagen catabolism. Well, interstitial collagen, this, this is what eats it up. Now, interstitial collagen mechanical and biological properties are altered by proteases. And that is what this thing is causing. And they catalyze the hydrolysis, da, 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 breaks the bonds is what it boils down to, and they fall apart. And then your skin gets sagging and all these other things. Um, and, I, and it, it appears that there's some, well, it's obvious that there's some some fact to this. Even people that were held in, there, there was a case, and I don't want to name names or anything, but people were held inside of houses or enclosures somewhere without going into the sun. When they came out after 15, 20 years, however long it was, they looked like they were uh, 12 years old because the sun had not had its chance to cause these damages. That's what it is. I believe it. You're, it's a lifetime of damage to this, this interstitial collagen structures that hold the, the fleshy parts of your body together. And they just released the thing how they just found this layer in your body. It's been known forever. I don't know how they missed it or, you know, I've been talking about it for a long time. So, but they just came out with a thing that they, they discovered it. Uh, this interstitial layer right under the skin, hiding in plain sight. If you look it up, it's out there. It's National Geographic. I don't know if they don't check on these things or what that, but they, they call this a brand new organ, new human organ, hiding in plain sight. <laughs> Interstitium, scientists found, is under our skin and between our organs. It's, the, it's like fascia. It's, you know, I, I don't know how they could have missed this. It's, uh, it's, it's this fibrous web and, uh, and it's been quite well, I think it's quite well known and understood now. It wasn't for a long time. When I started doing my research, I was contacting people who had no clue about it, and, and, and it started to be understood. Not that I had a big thing to do with it, because I, I was working on the mud fossils. But my biological samples are better than anybody's in the entire world. Better than anybody. There's nobody has the samples that I have that are exactly the, they're the they are exactly the creature. And they have the exact anatomy, exact chemistry. It's now been turned into stone, but it's quite easy to understand the, the chemistry that led it to that end. So uh, it's time to start taking this stuff serious.
All right, there's a big long um, video on strolling under the skin. It's 28 minutes, absolutely fabulous. Now, but this is the interstitial stuff they're talking about. I don't know why they think it's a brand new thing that's been out there for years and years. Now, I'm going to let her talk about it and run through it. But this is what they're talking about, is this web fiber. And that is what gets destroyed by the... Um, With rings that reinforce the solidity like an articulated... By the MMP1. Transparent sails... Dew drops. Travel along these pearly structures and you notice the same fractal arrangement everywhere. Large fibrils endlessly punctuated by other smaller ones. The tissue continuum is total, the marriage homogeneous, and the arrangement completely fractal. Over all right, I'm not going to bother going further. It's exactly what they say they just discovered. Now, this is what gets me about science. It's unbelievable how they can ignore everything and then all of a sudden they just discover it. Well, this is called Strolling Under the Skin, Terror Rosa. And um, this might not have been out long. Well, it was out 2010. That's eight years ago. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an amazing way that we do business here for uh, learning. And there is no learning. They just read to you out of old books and then hope somebody bumps into something. That's all it is. It's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a mess the way um, academia works. Total mess.